Bay Ridge. Welcome to another edition of After Hours, our second edition this week for the teaching on Jesus healing the man, the lame man down by the pool at Bethesda. And one of the things I wanted to talk about out of this text was uh, what is the relationship between sin and sickness? When Jesus comes back and he finds the man, he actually says to him, uh, you've been made well, stop sinning or something worse may happen. What does that mean? What, what exactly is the relationship between sin on the one hand and sickness on the other? Well, biblically, it is clear that sometimes sin and sickness are directly related. In other words, a specific sin has led to a specific sickness. One famous example of this is in 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 4, where we read that King Jeroboam heard what the man of God cried out against the altar at Bethel, which was a false altar, a false worship center. He stretched out his hand from the altar and said, seize him. And when he did that, the hand he stretched out toward the man shriveled up so that he could not even pull it back. So he actually became lame and frozen in a particular position, and it was directly related. He was struck with this infirmity because of a particular action. In the New Testament, there's the famous passage where Paul says, when we come to the Lord's table at communion, we need to recognize the body and blood of the Lord, and we need to confess our sins. And he said that because the Corinthians weren't doing this, because they were coming in and eating in an unworthy manner, some of them were sick and some of them had even died. A clear a link in both of these places between specific actions of sin and particular sicknesses that come on. And Jesus may, in fact, be saying this to the man. He certainly brings up sin and he warns the man. The Greek underneath it could mean stop sinning, as the NIV has it, or as some other translations have, don't sin anymore. So it could be Jesus is just saying, what he oftentimes says when he heals someone or forgives someone, go and sin no more. Jesus may be saying that to this man, but there is also an issue that as you read the Gospel of John, it's kind of interesting. The, the man who's healed here in John 5 and the man who is healed in John chapter 9, the blind man, there's a lot of ways that they're opposite of one another. The man in John 9 is kind of presented as a model to follow, a model of faith. The man in John chapter 5 is not. Uh, they, they do things very differently in how they respond to the authorities, how they respond to Jesus, what's going on. Well, the man in John chapter 9, there's the whole discussion whether his sickness is related to a specific sin, and Jesus is quite clear that it is not related to a sin. So it may be that, well, this is another way that they're different. The man in John 9, it's not related. The man in John chapter 5, it is. But a key thing we have to remember when we're talking about this relationship between sin and sickness or some kind of infirmity or suffering is, Jesus might know what that is. You and I don't. So we should be very, very slow to ever proclaim that a particular outcome is related to a particular sin. And that leads to another point, which is sometimes sickness is not related to a specific sin at all. As I just mentioned in John chapter 9, you can read there where he, Jesus sees a man who's been blind from birth and the disciples ask him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, so that he was born blind? Notice they've got the assumption that somebody must have sinned. Somebody did this and there's a direct cause and effect. But Jesus says neither this man nor his parents sinned. This happened so that the glory of God might be revealed. So Jesus says, you're wrong in your assumption. There is no relationship between this sickness and a particular sin. The disciples had a wrong understanding. Jesus has to correct it. Uh, and so it's important for us to understand that and to realize that as we're walking through. This is the same false understanding that Job's friends had. When Job is suffering, they said, there's some sin there, Job. There's something that you've pressed down, something you've hidden. If you weren't hiding it, you wouldn't be going through this. When in fact, we know God has already said Job was the most righteous man around. God had picked Job out for being righteous. So if Job's suffering was because of his sin, that would offer no hope to any of us because all of us would have some sin that could be the cause of our sickness. Jesus says that's in fact not the case. And it's imperative that we remember to point out to someone who is sick or suffering and say that it's because they're lacking faith or it's some sin is cruel, and it's actually a denial of the clear teaching of Scripture that there is no such cause and effect. 
The reality is all sickness and suffering is here because of sin, because we live in a fallen world, because the curse is pronounced on our creation, there is sickness and suffering. If there had been no sin, there would be no sickness or suffering. And when Jesus returns, the curse is going to be removed and there'll be no more sickness, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more death or, or crying or mourning. All those things will be done away. You can read that in Revelation 21 and 22. So we experience it now because we still live in a cursed, fallen world. And this is true even for Christians. And anybody who thinks Christians are exempt from that has to believe that they're going to live until Jesus returns. Because sickness is just always a precursor showing us that we are dying. From the moment we are born, we are dying. We are preparing for the fact that this body is wasting away. The, the Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians, it is always falling apart because that's the nature of this creation. But what we look forward to is that Jesus is going to return and he's going to heal all of this and remove the curse. So we always pray for healing, but we do not condemn the sick and do not be condemned if you are sick. There is not a direct correlation between sin and sickness. If the Lord reveals to you or to me that, that I have a sickness and it really is because of this, then I need to repent of that sin. I need to uh, repent and turn to the Lord. But apart from that, I would say most often that simply is not the case. It's really just part of living in this fallen world. So this is an issue that we all run into because we all deal with sickness. I pray that it's helpful to you in understanding God's word, receiving encouragement from him so that we can walk in faithfulness before our Lord. I look forward to gathering for worship this Sunday. I hope you have a great week. God bless.